have to see. I'd like to make the cross bigger even than we did last class. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I have one more paragraph under what I was sharing and then we'll move on from that. We are justified by faith. We are justified by faith, which means that by death and union into Christ who died and rose again, that this, we have this faith, that this is the right relationship that God originally wanted to bring us into. This was what he had in mind on the Day of Atonement, the Day of Atonement. Remember, we've, we've shared that and drawn it on the board, at Atonement, Atonement, bringing us into something greater than just some work going on in the Holy of Holies and then coming out and saying, you're forgiven for another year. That's not the faith that justifies. That's not the faith that really uh, accomplishes it. The faith that accomplishes it is the acknowledgement that there was a death of an innocent lamb, that that death that wasn't deserved we uh, partook of it. And that when that, it's kind of like this, the lamb goes in dead, his blood is sprinkled, but then the Lord, who was the lamb in death, comes out as the high priest, which he is now in resurrection, our high priest. And we are in oneness with him. And uh, during the whole process, the, the majority of the process, almost the whole process, of the high priest do, doing all of his duties on the Day of Atonement. <laughs> Did you just turn that one on? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm not. I almost feel like pulling this up and going. <clears throat> anyway, the high priest, uh, the lamb going in, Jesus as the lamb going into death, his blood going in to the most holy place, there being accepted of God, the death being accepted of God, the blood proof that his, he didn't just splint, you know, hurt his finger and bleed. It was proof that his life was poured out, which means it was the right kind of death. It was a sinless death. It was a, more importantly, a selfless death. Um, goes into the Holy of Holies and there is accepted by God the death is what's important. And God sees the right kind of death. And so the high priest is able to pass on now and come on out. And as I was saying, during the majority of that process, the high priest isn't in his, I'll call them fancy garments. He's in linen garments, just white linen. The majority of the Day of Atonement. But when it's all over with and he gets ready to come out to the people, he goes in and back in because he, he makes several appearances, which Jesus did. And he goes back in and he puts on his holy garments. And on those garments are the tribes of Israel, stones representing that on his heart and on his shoulder and it represents oneness into him. That all of that now is one into him in resurrection. Well, if you're a Jew and you're watching that process, you're just going, well, you know, one of them dumb animals died and God thinks I'm more important than a dumb animal and that's why he killed it and I'm in what's important to God, which is not the truth. The lamb was Christ. Uh, and they see all this, and then they see the high priest go out, and they go, yeah, all right, I can send one more year. I mean, um, I'm forgiven, you know, for that past year. And it's all to them about forgiveness. And it's all to them about not changing, per se. Well, we'll the lamb will die again next year, you know. 
And Hebrews addresses this. Hebrews addresses this. Hebrews addresses it in a spirit that is communicating that the old covenant kept going over and over because they never got what it was about. They never saw the true meaning from the heart of the Lord. And so, you know, what is the true meaning? Well, obviously, the Lord wanted oneness. The Lord wanted that. That's what he wanted all the way back from the beginning. That's the, that's the ultimate, what I called original intention. <clears throat> but we live as Christians. We live as separate. We live as, we don't live in death and resurrection. We don't live in the constant uh, reality of the death and of the resurrection and the resurrection not being, you know, us, <clears throat> but it being Christ and that that death, in the reality of that death, it is our death. He didn't need to die. He didn't deserve to die. We did. And so in that, we see what's in his heart. We're not just acknowledging doctrines. We see that this was something before the foundation of the world. Where do you get that from, Brother Randy? Try Ephesians, the first three chapters. I mean, just try it. Just try it. It starts off talking about, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly Christ, in Christ Jesus, in union with Christ Jesus. And he just uses that phrase, oh, in him, and in you, but the word in is always in union with. It's not, you know, uh, it's not like a, a car being in a garage, and it's in the garage, but it's not in union with it. It's like a branch being in a, a vine, and it's in union with it so that his fruit can come out of us so that the Father will be glorified by Christ Jesus, so that Christ will be glorified in, or so that the, you know, God will get glory in the church through Christ Jesus. And so it is, um, it, 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 it moves past learning, deep teaching, you have to move out of your head and into your heart to find his heart. You have to realize this isn't a doctrinal approach. This isn't a, a God's way. I, I thought of a plan like that. Like God goes, oh, I thought of a plan. Let's write it out and let's chart it and everybody will get it better. No, no, no. The plan was him his death. The plan is his life. The plan is it doesn't require much from us. Faith and union. You know? The just shall live by faith. But, but there's this there's this cloud hanging over us that is um, blinds us. That keeps us like Moses, the veil over his face so that we couldn't look to the end of that which God intended. So we couldn't look to the end. Well, when the veil's rent, we see his face and we're changed. So what is intended? Him. Him, that's what's intended. And us to be changed into that image from glory to glory. That, that's Second Corinthians 3. That's the sum of it. That's the... Um, and again... If, if, you know, you have two theologians who have different ideas arguing, they would have a mic, one on this side and one on that side, and they would go at it to make their proofs. It doesn't please the Lord one bit because we don't know his heart. We don't know what's in his heart. We don't know him. We don't, we're like Israel, and we're in captivity, and we're wandering around, in, in the daytime, like it's dark, and we're trying to find God, and we're trying to get hold of God, and we're trying to uh, be blessed by God, and we're trying to escape what Jesus has already died to get us free from. And when I say that, I don't mean he died to get us free from the devil. He could have killed, he could have crucified the devil, folks. Come on, if anybody deserved to be crucified with Christ, how about the devil? 
But he didn't crucify the devil because he's not trying to get us out of everything. He's trying to get something in us so that in these things, just like Robert was talking about with his car, he's trying to get us to a place where we're with him because we're in him no matter what. But this nothing shall, remember chapter 8? Nothing shall separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing. Okay? So to live that way means you're an overcomer. But it's not meaning you're overcoming the way most people say, I'm an overcomer, meaning I'm going to conquer everything. It means it doesn't conquer you. It means that the crucifiers will crucify you, but you're, you'll never be a crucifier. You will only be the crucified. That that's your heart. That, and why? Because you have the faith of Abraham. And that, that is a faith that believes that life comes out of death. Or more specifically, his life comes out of our death in him. If our faith is in that this is his method. This is the faith of Abraham, that in the deadness of, of, of Sarah's womb and him, then God is able to bring forth the seed and would not dare bring it forth with living flesh. You know, Robert was sharing with me just uh, when we took a little break there. May I share that little bit that you shared with me? We, we were talking about death, and, and he brought up the fact that, you know, he said, well, you know, we usually think in terms of death, well, you know, you're... You know, like your flesh, well, I'm dead, my flesh is dead, but actually I'm not dead, I'm dying to it, you know. And he gave the example of the dry bones, you know, in Ezekiel. And he said, there, now that's death. It's a valley of dry bones, and there's no flesh left. It's just dry bones. Everything is dead, dead. No flesh left. Well, you know... Well, Lord, I need to have some flesh. No, I mean, really, really. We would, um, we would never word it like that, but we would say, but I have to have some fun. Well, you know, I mean, I remember when Doug and Jeff and I and a couple other of the pastors, we did, we'd bring different pastors in different places and do big, big old conferences and stuff. And I'd stand up there and, and preach and and, of course, they would see my weird personality and all this stuff, and they'd laugh a lot in the whole process, you know. And, and, but I'd be sitting there slamming them with the cross, and, you know, um, you know I could see on their face, well, you know, but are we not going to have any fun? Is this no? And I said, look at me. Do I look like I'm bored stiff? Do I look like I'm, I can't have any fun? I really know how to have fun. But may it be by Christ, may it be in this vessel, may it be with everything that I can that I'm still embracing the death of that guy and embracing the life of Christ and wanting, not just embracing theologically again, em wanting, is, you know, I mean, embracing means, you know, like Mary at Jesus' feet, holding on. Um, but if we if we've heard that so many times, then just say, well, I want I want Jesus more than I want me. I really do. I know we're all supposed to say that, aren't we? We're supposed to say that. I think it's in the bylaws. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> but, but I think. <laughs> but I, you know, I think that's the way we think. You know, well, it's, you know, we're supposed to, you know, this and that. Say that I want Jesus. But I want Jesus not because of sin or flesh or whatever in me, but because I want Jesus. And, you know, and I thank, but I thank God for failures and flesh and all this kind of stuff. I thank God for it because it just pushes me more towards the Lord. It makes me say, I want you more. But when there's none of that, when there's nothing wrong, when everything's wonderful, I still want Jesus. And I want him right now. And... And I, 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 anyway, 
Again, this is the ground of justification by faith in the one Abraham believed in, meaning life out of death. He believed not a Again, not as a principle, but this was God's method. This is how he brought forth life. This is where Isaac was going to come from. Isaac wasn't just going to show up halfway through their lives when they were, you know, you know, mid-40s or something. That would go contrary to God's method. And if we see this as, as this is the way God operates, this is the way he wants to operate, well, why doesn't God move? Why didn't he do this? Well, because this is the way God operates. And, you know, it's like, again, the lost coin, if it rolls over there and we're searching over here, then we go, well, why didn't God show me the coin? What's, why didn't he do this? And we're wondering what's wrong with God, and he's wondering what's wrong with us. This is the ground of justification by faith and the one Abraham believed in. He, ha he saw how God had waited for his deadness and of Sarah's womb before he would bring forth the seed. He waited. And Abraham and them, you know, they got... They're going, well, what's going on here? What's taking so long? Why is God taking so long? What is wrong? Why won't God do this? He's heard me pray. You still got too much of you. You're not dead. All that would come after had to have death as its origin. Death as its origin. Well, is that such a, you know, we say that, you know, in light of our flesh and we don't like it, but isn't by pointing at the chalkboard and pointing at this cross, isn't all that comes to us coming through death? Wasn't that real? Wasn't it wonderful at one time when it only benefited us, but then we didn't want to believe that that was how God operated, that that was something he did in history, and it's over. And I hear that all the time. I hear that all the time. You know, that, yeah, well, Jesus did die on the cross, but, I mean, he was there just for a short time, and then he's up, and everything's good. Well, he's still a slain lamb on the throne, and he's still interceding for us and pouring out his life for others. When he should be, everybody ought to be honoring him and everything, but he's still doing that. I mean, look at the, the resurrection ministries of Jesus. And what you see is a poured out, self-giving lamb that ought to be honored more than even what we realize. But at least in the book of Revelation, it's saying, worthy is the lamb that was slain. In other words, they're honoring the true thing that did it all. They're not going... Yeah, you beat him. You beat the devil, dude. You know, and Jesus with a big crown and his nice long beard and robes, you know. Yeah, you're the conqueror. You, you know. We say, well, he defeated the devil and he did it. He did it through death by being defeated. His defeat won the victory. All right, we're going to, new title, and this may be my title up there, Shay, so just in case, yes. Can I just that last point? You, of course you may. I do realize that that people need is not the right word, but I'm going to use it. People need 
victories. But in truth, in God's economy, in God's understanding, in, in the way that God operates, life only comes out of death. And gain only comes out of loss. And much of the time, not all of it, but much of the time, it is we're the one that has to die so that they might live, or we're the one that has to lose that they might gain. All right. Well, if that's really the truth, then nobody wants to play that game. You know, I want to play a different game. This one's no fun. You know, how do you win this game? Well, you got to die. Okay, have you got another board game in there? <laughs> but you see, I understand that because that's absolutely our mind until God shows us this. So we can spend, you know, I mean, see, I resisted. I understand Paul, Paul resisted all of this stuff, man. He resisted it at first, man. He was going, this ain't right. You guys are crazy. You believe in death? Well, I'll kill you. <laughs> you know? And he did. And... And when I got saved, and I got saved under Kenneth Copeland, and I would, you know, and then I'd hear this stuff, and I'd go, this can't be right, you know? And my mind fought it because, because all of that fit into the way that the world thinks, that the, you want to defeat somebody, kill them. Jesus said, you want to defeat them, kill me. All right, well, that was Jesus. Well, who do you think we're one with? See, this, this oneness thing gets us every time because we, we can't separate. See, we say, nothing will separate me from my love. Nothing will separate you from your responsibility to live Christ either. <laughs> it's just a thought there, you know. <clears throat> All right, this one's called, uh, this subtitle, and this may be the title of the whole thing, Justification Requires Judgment to the Old. <clears throat> the old and that's okay because it's the old but how we ever you see it would be like living in the old country you know it'd be like living in, in Europe somewhere when people started discovering you know the new world and people are talking about it but they're going well I just you know I was talking with a I was talking with a brother from uh, well, I don't know if he's even saved we just met him real quickly and we were jabbering but he's from England and he uh, and we were talking about the craziness that in 200 years how this country just went and you know in England they've been there for thousands of years and they still haven't caught up to everything that we've got and there's just a lot of imagination and a lot of you know creativity and stuff going on and he said he said well don't you think that the reason for that is is that all of the people who weren't afraid all of the people who weren't stuck to something their farm or their ranch or whatever all of those who had an adventurous spirit or all of those who had imagination or whatever they all got on boats and came over here <laughs> and he said we bred a whole bunch of people like that and in 200 years went you know and uh, I, I said, yeah, well, spiritually, spiritually, come on. A lot of people are still stuck in the old. They are, because they're afraid. Well, I don't understand that. Well, I don't know what that means. I don't, you know, listening to me is not going to give you a good explanation. I'm, it just won't. I mean, honestly, it'll scare the fool out of you in many cases. But it's, it's. A lot of that's the passion I had for what I see of Jesus. That's all. I'm not trying to scare you, be mean, or anything like that. But I, this is what I preach. This is what I was born to preach. This is, this is where I live. It is. This, is. this is where I live, all of this, every time I share. And so, you know, but there are people who are afraid, and they don't know, and they listen to me or listen to somebody else, and, it, and, it, and they go, I don't... That doesn't sound so good to me. It sounds better to stay here in Europe and, you know, take care of my little farm and, you know, da da da, da. I don't want to get on the boat and go over there. I don't know what will happen. I heard there's giants in the land. I mean, Indians in the land. You know? And, and so this might not be 
a good idea. Maybe y'all should stay too, you know? Maybe y'all should stay and don't go. It could be bad for you. No, we're going. We're going, you know? And, and I just believe that these classes are nothing more than to dump gasoline on your fire. Seriously. That's all they're for. And, you know, they're not per se to give you a fire. Maybe, you know, maybe they will. But for the most part, that fire has to start in you. It has to start in you. And then when this is thrown, it can hit that and ignite it even further. But if there's nothing there, it's like there's a rock there. And I say, I'm going to pour gasoline on that rock. Everybody's going, okay, <laughs> go ahead. You know, you go, I'll do it. You know, <laughs> it's different than if it was a fire there. I'm going to pour gasoline on that fire. Wait, man, <laughs> you know, that's going to start a blaze. But, it, you know, if there's no fire there and you're just going, I'm going to pour gas on this rock. Everybody's going, no danger here. Dump it, dude. You know, so that, that's our responsibility. And it should be our heart to want Jesus the same as we'd wanted him at the height of any point in our life. He's not changed. We've changed. You know? And there, you know, you know, we can say, well, we're getting older. It doesn't seem to me. I know I'm getting older, but I don't think I'm changing in my heart. You know? I, I was blessed sometime back when Robert said something, and I just wanted you to know I was really blessed by it. He said, he said when he first came here, you know, that I preached Christ and I had this fire and was alive. I can't remember the exact words you used, but, but you know, was alive and had this passion for Jesus. And, and, uh, and then when he came back, he said, I was glad to find that you hadn't changed one bit, you know. And, um, you know, it's like, okay, I'm crazy then or I'm something else. So you're going to have to commit me because I'm not changing. And I'm not changing subjects, you know. This, to me, is the gospel. All right, so what's the, what's the subtitle now? Justification requires judgment to the old. The different words such as judgment, justification, justice, righteousness, all have the same root word in both the Hebrew language and the Greek. God wants to not just bring about judgment upon our wayward flesh, Judgment upon our wayward flesh. That's the way many Christians live right now. They think that's what it's about. Judgment on their wayward flesh. He's got a bigger judgment than that. And it's not just on your flesh. It is to put your flesh to death. Um, judgment on your wayward flesh that punishes our flesh for our wrong deeds. That judgment is too tame. Who do you think wrote that sentence? God wants to bring about, and here's my word in parenthesis, God wants to bring about apocalyptic judgment. <laughs> apocalyptic judgment. That, that is what it It is. And that's, what, that's what's going on. And, you know, there are people that enter into that. I mean, this is really the spirit of what I was saying in Ireland where we talked about the progression of the lamb and unto bride and all of the junk that had to go in between and everything. I'm telling you, it's all right there. It is right there. You talk about the end, that's the end. And anything else that manifests or whatever in this earth and all that kind of stuff, that's fine. But, but the book of Revelation, just as a, as a story, and that's how it's going to go and that's going to bring the end, I'm sorry, folks. You read the rest of the New Testament, and it tells you this is the end right there. This is the end. <clears throat> All right, so that judgment is too tame. God wants to bring about apocalyptic judgment. God's methods for bringing that about is through the cross. To be declared righteous by God is not to be acquitted of judgment, but for it to be carried out in a substitute. Yeah. Wait, wait. But the judgment was not merely found in the fact that Jesus died in our place so that we would not have to die. 
Jesus on the cross was the executioner. Right? Isn't he the one who took us all there and saw to it that we died? He was the executioner who made sure that we were put to death. Why did he go to the cross? To make sure we were put to death. I mean, when I say why, that's not the only why. But there, there's no other why unless you start with that why. He had to put us to death. There has to be a judgment to the old. If there's not a judgment to the old, it's still us. God help us. God help him that he would have to keep putting up with this. This is like, this is almost like what happened with Israel and before the captivity and all of the junk and everything. And they didn't receive the, the original intention of his heart and they just made a religion out of it and everything else. And he goes, okay, I'm going to have to just send you all off into captivity. And out of, and, and here was the deal, and out of captivity I'll bring back a remnant. Well, what does that remnant do? They're going to come back and die for the ones who didn't come back. Did you know that? They're going to give themselves. That's the spirit of the thing. The church comes down. From heaven. Leaves heaven, coming down, having the glory of God, bringing it to the earth. The bride. His wife, that which is one with him, that which is after his kind, that which is not selfish or that which is not so Christian that it, you know, that it walks on the other side like the Good Samaritan. Jesus didn't just come over there. Jesus wasn't a Good Samaritan. Jesus was so much beyond a Good Samaritan. But he was just trying to show that in our religiousness, um, I, I know people that are dedicated to the poor. I know people that are dedicated to missions and, and people that are in foreign lands. I know, I know all of that. Not all of that is because of the life of Christ. Some of it is because of a commitment to a cause. Some of it is because they just want to feel better about themselves. And so they, and I'm telling you, there are people that do that. I'm telling you, there are. I'm not saying everybody is that. I'm just telling you there are people that do that. Um, Deb and I were missionaries there. And I remember the feel of coming back, visit, you know, when you come back to the States and people say, oh, you're a missionary. And I remember going, wow, that's almost like being a celebrity to some of these people that I was, I'm a missionary, you know. Do you think that kind of stuff could influence people? Can. Okay. So the goal isn't to just be a philanthrop philanthropist. The goal is that it be Christ. Not just helping people, but it be Christ. And I say, here's why I say that. Because some people, they don't help anybody. They're too self-centered. Other people, they help a bunch of people, but it's still not Christ. It's still self-centered. They're still sucking off of it. They're still drawing milk to their own satisfaction from that. So, so the goal is this thing that is in God's heart. And we can't know that because we don't really know him, so we don't know that he's really, really that way. Look, I love you. We say, I know you love me, you died for me. No, no, no. I love you, and I died for you so that we could be one, so that you would have my life, so that you would get over all this stuff. <clears throat> So Jesus on the cross was the executioner who made sure that we were put to death. How many of you ever thought of Jesus as being the executioner? Well, he was because he made sure we all died. Justice is carried out on the cross, thereby bringing about God's justification for embracing you. But only in oneness with Christ, both in death and in resurrection. He embraces the dead, the crucified Christ, 
and he embraces the resurrected Christ. And we're one in him. Paul said, I want to be found in him. So, there can be no justification without judgment. To embrace justification is to embrace your death with Christ and the faith involved in the process which involves life out of that kind of death. Faith in the process. Faith that, that there's something about God that he has chosen that he's going to use the foolish things of the world. He's going to use the things that are lost. He's going to use the things that are in death. He's going to use the exact opposite of the mind of this world. And, and so this thing of life out of death, I can't emphasize enough. It's not a principle. It is the faith of Abraham and faith that Abraham had toward God, I believe I'm in death and she's in death, though we were promised all this stuff and we don't see any of it. I believe that you waited for us to be in this death so that you could be the one who brings forth your seed out of us. And I am going to trust you and I am with you who against faith believed in, or against hope believed in hope. And stood his ground, not because I believe in the principle of life out of death, but I believe in you, and you believe in this is the way that you're going to operate, and you did everything based on it, right there. If we can see that, faith will spring forth in your heart. If you don't see it, it's like, well, he's just talking about that life out of death principle again. God help us then. You know, you should be, you know, you should be praying in tongues while I teach. You know what I mean? You, you really should. Under your breath, you should just be, oh, God, I just remember that. I want to know this. I want to know you. I need you. Da, 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 da. But, you know, I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm not saying that that's happened, but it can happen to you. You could. It's probably happened before. Surely God was in this place, and I knew it not. And just, just go in and just another sermon, that's what we call it. And God says, I was trying to communicate my son to you. I was trying to bring you to my heart. That's all I was trying to do. And all you could do is hear that ranting long hair <laughs> preaching. <clears throat> Jesus died in place of us, <clears throat> selflessness. But it is not the act that justified that justifies, but faith. It is not the act that justifies, but faith in the act, belief of the process, and faith in the union. Okay, so there. We, faith in the act, because you do have to go back to the cross. Belief of the process, and faith in the union. <clears throat> Okay, so the process, so you're not just believing in the act of Jesus dying on the cross. You're, you're, you're believing in a process that is God or that is on which God operates. It's an ancient path. And this is, the, this is to know this really is to know God because this is what he always does. This is the original intention to bring about what he wanted to do. And everybody missed it because they're, they're thinking of the reverse. God wants to defeat the Romans. God wants to defeat our enemies. He wants to show everybody the victory by making us something. Amen? Is, it, is that kind of what they were thinking? And he's just the opposite of that. Well, to know God is the beginning to know this. I don't even want to use the word principle anymore because it's the faith of Abraham. <clears throat> To believe uh, Romans 5.1, which I guess we should read that. Romans 5.1, therefore being justified by faith. Justified by faith. Really? Justified by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the act. Belief in the process. And what was it? Faith in the union. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Okay, to believe Romans 5, 1 with, with our access by him means we must first believe in a cross that crucified us in him. You don't, he, I, I've gone over this different ways, but you don't, it's not like everything's behind this door and Jesus is standing there and we walk up and he goes, oh, I'll give you access here, you know, da 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 because, uh, you know, God told me to or God did a, I did a really th good thing for you. Go on in there, fella. This is the door, the cross here on this chalkboard. That represents the door in. There is, you're not going to get in there any other way. You know, I started our first class with these same exact words. You're not getting in there any other way. I don't care. You can find little sneaky ways and say you're in, but he's going to catch you and put you out. Remember those parables and stuff I'm, I'm alluding to here. I can't quote them all. So, but, you know. He goes, this is it. This is the door. I don't know. I mean, even that door right there, if you look, that's a cross, right? Dead in the center at the top of that door. Almost all doors in America are made like that with a cross if you can recognize that that's what it is. Carpenter started doing that because they said the cross is the door. There's a bunch of different ways. Go to England. You can find it. Or, or, Europe, you can find a million different ways to make a door, but that's the common door right there. Cross right in the middle of it. Okay, well, whether that's valid or not, here's what is valid. This is the door. That's fake. That's not, this is the door. And this is what it's going to take. There's no fooling around. There's no playing around. There's no hoping God will let you get away with certain things, he's not going to do it. He's going to bring you down. You're going down. <laughs> You're going down into death. Yes. Search for gold, you will find me. Mm -hmm. And if you search for gold, you know it's not 
easy to search for no. gold. And it requires a lot. But if it's in your heart to find that gold, you will. You will. It may take a lot of digging and a lot of it's a lot of the process. But um, you will find him, and you will know him. You know, now I'm not saying that I know. I, I don't think I have a little bit of the Lord in me, but I, I want to know him. Well, I, that's what we're saying, and that's, you know, I mean, I, I've i sat under pastors, I've sat under teachers here even, you know, and when people say, you know, this, you know, they're talking about something, they say, well, you know, then you don't know the Lord, they don't, they're not really, I'm not really saying, well, you don't know the Lord, you know the Lord, but maybe there's more of the Lord, but when I've sat and listened to people I, I had to do. I had to learn this when I was in Bible school. When somebody said, "Well, you don't know this," I watched myself bristle and say, "Well, I know. I know this. I watched stuff rise in me, and it was so ugly. It was just ugly." And uh, and the Lord just rubbed my face in it over and over because He just made sure that the teacher said, "You know, well, you just don't know this," you know. And and finally, I had to change. I had to change. See. I didn't, you know, I don't even know if this happened, but I, I wouldn't doubt it. It's human nature, not just Randy. It's all of us. I, I would probably go to those teachers or people and try to prove to them that I do know it. You should have been them all. Well, that was way back earlier. But, yeah, I mean, there was, you know, I would, you know, probably try to prove to them that I do know this or, no, you got to listen to me and you'll hear some really great stuff. <laughs> and that got even more odious than the other. You know, it was just like this. I am a hog pen of yuck. I am just full. I, it seems like every turn that I make, it's all about me and about, you know, me. I don't want to look bad or I don't want people to think this or I don't want that, da, da, da. And I'm going, my God, I need Jesus. I, I don't know him, you know. Then I start going back to when they were pointing and going, I don't know him. And if anybody says that I don't know him or I need to know him or da, 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 I try, I mean, when I say this, I mean, I think I've gotten pretty good at just falling into it, but I want to always say, Lord, I don't know you like I need to. The scripture says you know nothing yet as you are. So I, so I can fall on that. I can say, I don't know him. I need to know him. I want to know him, you know? And if everybody would do that, not just here, I'm just, you know, <laughs> then we would see the glory of God. But there's always this resistance and there's pride and there's all this stuff. And that, you know, God, God didn't send Jesus to die so that that could live in the church. He didn't. And, and see, I, I can preach to you, but ultimately I can't change you. But I, I can hear these things and I can, and, and I want you to know, you see this stuff right here? I got this from God sitting with him. <laughs> he, was, he wasn't going, well, let me give you a great lesson. You know, he's going, look, buddy, you need me just like anybody else does. And I just want to hear his voice. I want to, I want to hear his heart. I want, to, I want him to be able to speak to me and me not go off in some half-cocked thing of self-justification. Anyway, I'm going to, you know, this class is going to be a little shorter. I'm just going to read this last two sentences, and then we'll stop. Justification is not bestowed on individuals, but upon those who are joint crucified and joined in oneness in Christ. Do you know that? Justification, we always think, well... He justified me. No, he didn't. He did it all at one time. Yes, you were included, but it wasn't just you. That's like him saying, he raised, you know, he raised me up and set me in heavenly places. I remember one day he grabbed me by my hair and he pulled me up there. You know, you know, no, we were raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so... So your justification, you might have, you might have had an individual salvation experience, but your salvation is not individual. Because it happened 2,000 years ago as far as the work that he did. Okay? All right, so I'll read that one again, then I'll 
Justification is not bestowed on individuals, but upon those who are joint crucified and joined in oneness in Christ. All right, so now here's the ones who God justifies. If, if all of this is true, and that's for you to judge, I don't even say, you know, I mean, I, yes, pastor and director of the Bible's going on, but those are, that's just stupid titles. They mean nothing. If the Holy Spirit doesn't bear witness with you, just throw it in the garbage can. But if he's bearing witness on any level, then pursue the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and with all your might. God justifies the one who lives out from Jesus. In fact, I, I got a couple of scriptures here. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who are also walk in the steps of that faith of our Father. This is Romans 4, 12. Let me start again. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our Father, Abraham, which he had which he had being yet uncircumcised. All right, so he's talking about the steps. We walk in the steps of Abraham. What does that mean? You know, well, here's what we, could, here's what we usually do. Well, that means everything that, that he ever did, you know, uh, we need to leave family and stuff. And we need to leave Iraq. <laughs> that's, that's, some of you know that that's actually was his was the country he did leave from, but different name at the time. <laughs> we didn't get out of Iraq. <laughs> and I'm walking in the faith of Abraham by stating that. You know, God, no, people, we need to be brought to a death. We need to be brought to a place where we cannot bring forth the seed, and we realize it, and we turn in faith, and we say, but see, it's not like I can't do it. Listen carefully. It's not like, oh, I can't do it. You know, I'm 30 years old and I can't do it. Um, you're going to have to do it. No, that's not being brought to deadness. And I'm not talking about an age thing here. I'm talking about a spiritual reality. That's not being brought to deadness. That's just, I can't do it. God, you do it. Sometimes there's an attitude behind that. Well, I can't do it. You do it. But this is faith. This is actual, real faith that justifies, and it's in the steps of Abraham. Faithful Abraham, I think, is one place it calls it. And it is a faith that says, you could have done this a long time ago, which you don't think a lot. I mean, you could have with Abraham, too. You know, you could have done this a long time ago, and you, you didn't do it, and I got a feeling that you were waiting till she and I had given out and given up on ourselves, and now we were going to put our faith in you, and that, here it is. I think, this is Abraham talking, I think I've discovered a key about you. I think that the faith you're wanting is something in me to line up with the way you see things or believe or however you want to put it. And that is, you wanted us both dead to the ability to bring forth this seed. And because, because not just because we're bad, but because you bring life out of death. Okay, now, folks, if you start believing that, you're going to start seeing God being able to use you in, in hard places instead of freaking out and crying and whining and wanting everything to change. And, oh, God, why don't you do this with so-and-so? You're going to say, I'm working on you, you know, <laughs> I'm working on you. And so then he doesn't have to change the world. He doesn't have to crucify the devil. We're crucified. You go, why are we crucified? Should have been the devil. Why would you say that? That's not right. You're not right. You're an unfair God. No, oh, no, he's just God. He's just God. He, he works off of this. 
This is how he sees things. And when he, when you get in a situation or whatever, that that just is too hard for you. There's a death that you can go into. There is a way of escape. But you know, death. I mean, some people use death like suicide as a way of escape. But this death has life that comes out of it. But you have to comprehend what that means. I mean, you, you know, I mean, I'm saying stuff, but this is all practical. You have to learn to put it in every step, that, in walking in the steps of Abraham, walking in the faithful steps of Abraham. Every step is being a step of faith so that when you come into something that's hard or easy or anything, you see, even, even something easy or blessed, you can still be looking for opportunities for death because you want life to be brought forth, either for somebody else or whatever. All right. All right, so we're going to stop. Oh, wait a minute. I still had a verse 16 here. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Glory to God. Let me do my little marker thing and we're dismissed. Well, that sounds right, doesn't it? I'm telling you, this stuff is so good. I can't even tell it. It's just so good. It is liberating. But if your flesh is still alive, it is horrible. It is horrible. Um, Kelly sent me an email. and Are they still on there? She sent me an email, and she said, uh, she said you know, because I publicly told her, Give it to the people in Ireland, just like we're getting it right here. Remember that? Swing, Levi, swing. She said she's been doing that, and she said even, even Ed uh, came up to her, and uh, she said, well, what did you think about what I shared? And Ed said, uh, I hated it. I hated every word of it. He said, but I so needed to hear it from the Lord. <laughs> you know, and that's okay, isn't it? Isn't it? Because our flesh isn't going to like certain things, but there's something within us that does love the truth, and loves the Lord. Father, bless this word and bless the hearts of your hungry and caring people that do care about you, your heart. They want to put you first in everything, and they want to they want to take their place now in death because you were in death so that we could live. Now they want to take their place in death so you could live. So, Father, we ask you to move by your spirit. Continue to captivate us in this place and, and in Arizona and in Ireland and all the places that you're doing what you're doing. You are affecting us, and you are effectively cornering us to bring us to a place where we will either break and run or we will fall down and grab hold of the cross and your feet on that cross and say, I want you, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit be loosed upon all of us. We ask it in Jesus' name and to his glory. Amen. Amen. We're dismissed.